sound speeds, and I hope that your sound is noise free. Both kinds of noise. Both kinds of no Okay, let me clarify. We're all familiar with the kinds of noise that you run into out there in the world. Noise pollution, let's say, air conditioner units, buses, airplanes, all those kind of sounds that are not normally part of nature, that interfere with our soundtrack. But there's also different colors of noise. That is white, pink, brown, and each one of them has its own specific definition, and we are going into those in this video. Let's start off with one that everyone's probably familiar with white noise, which could be defined as a signal with random and different frequencies at the same intensity. Now, if you've ever heard snow on a VHS tape or heard static on the radio or maybe a machine that helps you to soothe your way to sleep, you're probably familiar with white noise. It looks like this on a frequency spectrum and it sounds like this. And if you smooth out the frequency spectrum, it looks like this. See how even it is? That's white noise. Now let's look at pink noise. Pink noise is the same random and different frequencies, but at the same energy level per octave. And here's what an octave is. If you look at 20 hertz and you look at 40 hertz, the difference is only 20 hertz, but the difference is also one octave to the human ear. And from 40 to 80, and from 80 to 160, and from 160 to 320, and so on. So that if you look at a frequency and you double that frequency, that is one octave to the human ear. Pink noise looks like this on a frequency spectrum, and it sounds like this. And when smoothed out, it looks like this. The decibel level of pink noise drops off approximately 3 dB per octave, and because it takes more power at lower frequencies to produce the same volume as high frequencies, it can come across as being more intense sounding. Audio engineers use pink noise to calibrate their studio monitors. When they put pink noise through the system, they can go into a graphic equalizer and create what's called an inverse filter to flatten out the signal response. That way they can make sure they're mixing flat. Brown noise, sometimes referred to as Brownian noise or red noise, refers to a sound created by Brownian motion, which is basically if particles are suspended in either a liquid or a gas and they are randomly running into each other, that's the kind of sound that is produced by those particles. This is how brown noise looks and sounds. The noise produced decreases by 6 dB per octave. And the sound of brown noise is something kind of like a waterfall or a heavy rain. And people who listen to brown noise claim that it helps with their reading comprehension. Now let's talk violet noise. Remember that brown noise is a decrease in 6 dB per octave? Well, violet noise is the same noise, but this time it is an increase in 6 dB per octave. Referred to as differentiated white noise, this is how it looks and sounds. Hydrophones or underwater microphones can be overwhelmed by violet noise at higher frequencies. Violet noise can also be used in the treatment of tinnitus. Blue noise has very minimal low frequencies and has an increased power density of about 3 dB per octave. This is what blue noise looks and sounds like. Retinal cells in your eyes are arranged in a blue noise-like pattern. And sometimes when processing audio or video and mastering to a CD, blue noise is used in the dithering process, which is when it's used to randomize quantization error. In order to understand what gray noise is, you have to understand A weighting. A weighting is how the human ear perceives frequencies at low volume. Now, if you can imagine that curve, now reverse that. Therefore, gray noise sounds like every frequency at the same volume to your ear. This is the way gray noise looks and sounds. The human ear is less sensitive at lower and higher frequencies. Therefore, the curve of gray noise corrects for that and makes it sound very even across all frequencies. Green noise is referred to as the noise of the world, free of low frequencies like engines and high frequency sounds like computer fans, therefore concentrating on the mid-range frequencies like the sounds you would hear in nature. This is what green noise looks and sounds like. Green noise can be used in the testing of audio circuits because the human voice falls within the frequency range of green noise. Orange noise, basically the frequencies of musical notes in a scale. This is what it looks and sounds like. Kind of reminds you of an out-of-tune ensemble, doesn't it? And the last one we're going to cover is black noise. Basically, it is this. No, you don't need to see it. That's a little too much excitement for me. I'm out. 
Tune into the next episode of Sound Speed where we'll have more sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.